Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. And I'm Adriana Cotero. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. A project on Tinian will bring millions of dollars to the island. We tell you how. Also tonight, the Mount Carmel Knights take the AG Cup home. And a place of worship on Tinian received a big donation for work repairs. In sports, the Gold's Body Transformation Challenge winner is announced. We tell you who placed tonight. Stay with us. These stories and more are next. Locomo! Get more, do more with Locomo Pacific. Enjoy endless local calls and SMS with 30 gigabytes of data for only $59 a month. Sign up today and get a Samsung J6 smartphone. Free! Connect with the familia, share your moments with your primos, and celebrate the Mariana's way every day. The possibilities are endless. On the fastest network that gives you more, Locomo! now available at Dokum Pacific. Better together. Some conditions apply. Mental health, what is it? my emotions. It's what's in my head. It is being able to realize his or her own potential. It's coping with normal stresses in life. Half of adult mental illness begins before the age of 14. Over 40% of children ages 13 to 17 experience behavioral problems even before they reach the seventh grade. Suicide is also the third leading cause of death among youth ages 15 to 24. These numbers are not easy to absorb, which is why we want to remind the community that the emotional well-being of a child is just as important as their physical health. The Community Guidance Center Systems of Care under the Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation offers an array of services and support for children and youth ages 5 to 21. One of the most important ways parents can help is to listen to their children and to take their feelings seriously. They may want change, they may want a hug, or they may want to seek professional help. So take the time to talk to your children and understand how they feel because... Children's Mental Health Matters! Good day, Tiruwami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Monday, May 6, 2019. History is made on the island of Tinian as a project that has been in the works for many years is finally kicking off. All right, and with that, we have an approved sign lease. It's the Tinian Divert Airfield Lease Agreement, an agreement between the Commonwealth Ports Authority and the U.S. Department of Defense to lease the land on the north side of the runway at the Tinian Airport for a divert field landing site. The divert basically is a, not only a training but an operational requirement for the Air Force. And so in the event that Anderson Air Force Base or, you know, Guam, Wampat, uh, something happens to it, something catastrophic happens to it, the Air Force needs somewhere else to go. And so as an operational requirement, you know, Tinian would be it in that event. But uh, they also have training requirements. And so um, annually they do uh, humanitarian relief exercises, right? So if, if an area gets hit by the typhoon, uh, they practice uh, how they, they, they would respond to, to that type of relief. 
Thilis is giving $21.9 million to the island of Tinian, which will be used for improvements to the infrastructure at the airport. When the first interest came in, they wanted to do Saipan as a divert project. Well, we got together with the board, CPA board, and said, let's support Tinian since this is where the military proposed has always been uh, since day one. So DOD came back and said, how about let's do the, the hybrid, a little bit of Saipan and a little bit of Tinian. Then I wrote another letter and said, no, uh, we're firm about our decision that we want it in Tinian. So through that, ne that um, letter and that negotiation that we've had with Kimberly Hines, with the chair CPA and Allison Sands, and everyone has participated, um, this is where we're at now. The divert project itself has been ongoing, I think, almost now 10 years, but uh, it's kind of, you know, we've seen, the Commonwealth has seen different iterations from uh, a Saipan only to a hybrid and then moved on to just a Tinian um, only option. And so um, today is a, is a milestone uh, for so many different reasons and on so many different levels. Um, and it's not just important for the Commonwealth, but I think, you know, just for the region itself in terms of our support uh, and our and our role and our strategic importance here in the in this side of the world. Another part of the agreement is for a fuel pipeline to be installed at the airport, which will allow for larger aircrafts to enter the island, giving an important capability for the military. That'll be a nice way for aircraft, uh, larger aircraft that are coming into land uh, that can be used for a refueling mission in the air they'll be able to land on that piece of concrete, it's called an apron, and uh, we'll also put a large fuel storage there. And those tankers carry fuel up to where other aircraft are and distribute fuel to the other aircraft. And so they'll have a safe place to land, they'll have a safe place to park, and we'll have a fuel storage area. It's very important capability for the military. The fuel storage will also result in international flights as an option for Tinian, connecting the island to the rest of the world. Well, we're doing the environmental um, uh, impact statements on, on that right now. The way it is routed uh, provides the opportunity, and we're working with the CPA on how uh, CPA might be able to tap into that pipeline to create their own fuel storage capability. And since there's no fuel storage here right now, that being able to have that fuel storage capability is what will allow planes to come in and uh, Ms. Hines said earlier about the getting the Asia flights in, it's critical to have a fuel capability here for that. So we believe that you know that's part of the mutual benefit um, that, that we can, the CPA can leverage the infrastructure that we're going to be putting in anyway. Following the signed lease agreement is $400 million worth of construction planned for Tinian to prepare for the divert airfield. And now the question is, what's next? In as far as divert is concerned is the negotiation of what's called a service operating agreement. And so basically as a result of the Air Force's footprint here at the airport, uh, there's going to be additional maintenance costs, there's going to be additional uh, personnel costs, uh, and there's going to be additional maintenance costs. And so, and obviously utilities, right, because they're hooking onto our grid. And so what we hope to see basically is additional funds coming into CPA Tinian so that one, we can hire more people, right? Uh, and that's how, how I hope that that will translate into a direct benefit to the community. The CPA board will be meeting this week to figure out the process and timeline of this project. Reporting for KSPN2, I'm Ashley McDowell. Mount Carmel School takes the gold at the 35th Annual Attorney General's Cup Speech Competition. Congratulations to MCS and all the competitors. And we speak with the winner. Our history is full of industries cursed by hubris, a poker industry run amok, a garment industry whose abuses led to federalization, and a casino industry that is falling apart as we speak. Now, we are presented with another industry and another choice. Will we, again, fly too close to the sun with the cannabis industry? The legalization of cannabis in the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. This is the topic. And the questions being asked is the passage of Public Law 20-66, also known as the Twelamard Sensible CNMI Cannabis Act of 2018, a cure or a curse for the Commonwealth.
Will it help or hurt the CNMI in the short term or the long term? High school students take the podium and present a speech in under 10 minutes to answer that question. Today's question asks us whether the cannabis industry is a cure or a curse. Well, I, for one, believe that it is not a magic cure for all our problems. But we can take steps to make sure it's not another curse either. To support this perspective, I will discuss three main points. First, I will address the federal implications of Public Law 20-66. Second, I will examine regulations from other states that can guide us. Third and last, I will argue that the harms of cannabis outweigh its benefits, which further underscores the need for effective regulation. And after vocalizing this, Mount Carmel School's Justin Ocampo places first. It's a distinct honor to bring this home to Mount Carmel School. And I just want to thank all the people who have helped me along the way, my coaches, my team, and everyone who rooted for and prayed for me, even when I didn't believe in myself. Tell me what it's been like to prepare for this. Oh, um, <laughs> it was just a lot of repeating and repeating the same thing over again to the point where I got sick of it. But I guess that's what ended up helping in the end. And it was, um, although it was hard, you know, I got to work with people that I love, my team and my coach, Galvin DeLeon Guerrero, and I love them. And his coach, president of MCS, Galvin DeLeon Guerrero, also received a special award. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And uh, it is a distinct honor to, to be able to coach students and work with a team of students every year. And it's because I care deeply. And it means a lot to me that they care deeply. And it means a lot that every year we get to go up against really scary competitors who also care passionately about what they say. And um, so yeah, that's the secret is, is caring. And caring, the secret that needs to be made more public. World is we need to be less judgmental and more caring for one another. And Dalian Guerrero says he accepts this recognition on behalf of all the students he's had the honor and privilege to work with over the years. It really is a humbling um, recognition. And like I said, I accept it on behalf of them. They, they, did, they put in all the hard work and they were willing to deal with my coaching. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, having coached this for many, many years, I, I, I appeal to our leaders to actually listen to what these students have to say and not give them token lip service. Um, there have been so many topics over the year, federalization, the Pagan military use, that I feel our students are speaking up, they're doing all this hard work, but I don't feel anyone is really listening to them. So I appeal to our leaders to take some time to listen to them, maybe invite them up, have a forum, pick their brains. You never know what you're going to learn. Mr. G is one of the most kindest and, well, he mentioned it in his speech, but caring people that I know. And it's going to be a real shame that I have to leave Mount Carmel and, you know, not be with him anymore. But he's prepared me for life beyond this, and I'm eternally grateful. Uh, you did it. You did it. Redemption. <laughs> Congratulations, Mount Carmel Schools. You did it. Reporting for KSPN2 News, I'm Adriana Cotero. Also on the island of Tinian is some big news for the San Jose Catholic Church. Take a listen. It's a place many on the island of Tinian go to worship, share in faith, and confess their sins. It's the San Jose Catholic Church. But after Super Typhoon U2 swept over the CNMI back in October 2018, it caused destruction to anything in its pathway. And one of the buildings in that track was the San Jose Church. According to some engineers, you know, really, this, this was devastated, really. You know. If you go to the second floor, it's just all, that's so why we have this covering here that you will not see everything. So we have this tent here to, you know, because if it rains, it just, you know, okay? So it's really hard to, to really fix this one because it costs a lot of money for us. So we are just trying our best to use whatever we can this, 
as high-speed winds ripped through buildings and objects flew through the air. The San Jose Church was part of the destruction. Since that day, community members have come together to raise funds for the reconstruction and rebuilding of the church. And one organization has made quite a donation to help with that rebuilding. Uh, our company pledged one million dollars uh, maybe a month after the typhoon, and uh, we immediately give away seven hundred thousand. And I kept the three hundred thousand for a reason because I see a lot of help coming in. So I want to take a wait and see and make sure that uh, the, the money actually go to where the need is. And uh, so we give away two hundred thousand not too long ago. So I have the one hundred thousand remaining. So. Kimberly came to me without hesitation. I said, that's it. That's what, where the 100000 is going to go to. The $100,000 will be used to rebuild the social hall. The social hall is a building located outside the church that will be used as the temporary place of worship until enough funds are raised to rebuild the actual church. The 100000 we need to start rebuilding the old uh San Jose School building that was totally devastated in order for us to use that one as our temporary place of worship as we begin the construction of our new church. It may take time, yes, I know that one, but again, we, we, we need to start somewhere because we don't have other places to go for our worship, a place of worship. So we will use that uh, building social hall for our temporary place of worship soon. The San Jose Church is asking for more donations from the public and businesses as it will take about 1.7 million dollars to rebuild the church structure. I would like to thank everyone also. I know you're just there. You're just waiting for us to knock at your doors as I've said. Please help us. You know we love San Jose. He is the father of Jesus and we will as a carpenter, St. Joseph wants us to share whatever, whatever, materials, cash, whatever, so that we can rebuild our church, hopefully. It may take two to three years, it doesn't matter. We are not in a hurry. Share your blessings to us. Let us build the house of God. Our faith is stronger than ever. The rebuilding of the social hall is step one of many more for the San Jose Church in Tinian. Our physical church is gone, yes, but our faith is still here. And the physical church is gone, but the people is still here because the people is the real church. Donations to the San Jose Church can be made by calling Father Ray at 287-0131. And a GoFundMe account will be set up soon where donations can be made. Like and follow the Friends of San Jose Church Tinian Facebook page for updates. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Ashley McDowell. Coming up, the Saipan community came together Friday evening into Saturday morning for a good cause. We have this coverage next. Stay tuned. Get the phone plan you're looking for at IT&E. Stay connected with the strongest, widest, and most reliable network in the Marianas. Stream, share, play, shop, and surf the web with super fast 4G LTE data. Whether you need just a few gigabytes of data to get by, or if you want to go further with unlimited data, there's a plan for you. You'll always get the best price. Visit any IT&E store or call us to learn more. IT&E. Explore your world. Jose and Pedro were born on the very same day. Jose liked to play sports. Pedro liked to play video games. Jose's favorite word was pass. Pass me the ball. Pedro's favorite word was pass too. Pass me the rice. Jose is retired and has both time and energy. His life is just beginning. Pedro has diabetes, hypertension, and gout. His life could soon end. Eat less, play more, live longer. Brought to you by PHI, the pharmacy you can trust.
Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. The 2019 Mariana's March Against Cancer brought out survivors, caregivers, and supporters to the CPA field. KSPN2 was there and brings you the sights and sounds by video journalist Delbert Camacho. In honor of and in memory of, this is the 2019 Mariana's March Against Cancer, where we are one community on one journey. I was diagnosed with cancer in two, two years old. I am a 12-year cancer breast cancer survivor. I fought it in LA for two years. I was in the hospital for one year, and I have lymphoblastic leukemia. It's a very rough struggle. March 12, 2017. I got a call from my my first cousin in the Philippines. Um, receiving a bad news. My dad is not going to make it. Um, he has three to five days left to live. So I um, arrived in the Philippines March 15, 2017. Saw him. He was uh, bedridden already. And I spent only three days with him. On March 18 at um, 6.45 a.m., that was his last breath. Last day on his funeral, my right buccal area on my right cheek started to swell. It's a battle that it, you know that is a work in progress. So um, it's just a matter of being positive and staying strong and keeping that battle alive. It's a very much struggle. Like there's mo there's moods where you're mad, they're sad, depressed, emotional. Receiving a bad news that I was diagnosed with <laughs> squamous cell carcinoma stage one. Right there and then, I thought of my kids. Um, that's the only reason I cried. You go through a lot. You go to a lot of hospital visits, especially if you have a lot of support from your family. You can get through it. It's a very positive uh, uh, message that can contribute to the community to show the support and let the community know that we are here, that the island's here, the cinema is here. We've all gone our different routes and journey and the thing is it's not a taboo, it's something that we need to talk about, you know, and not keep a secret, you know, and, and we cannot um, feel bad about also being diagnosed with cancer. The one thing I tell people that are newly diagnosed that have reached out to me on social media is don't own the cancer. Don't say I have cancer. Say they said I have cancer. You know, just don't own it. I do believe in the power of intention and the mind and and um, I also believe in, uh, you know, people dying on time, you know, like basically from a, from a diagnosis because our mind is that strong. So we need to empower ourselves and our mind to really look the other way. It's, it's an uphill battle, you know, versus being negative about it. Um, if you control the positive laws of attraction, um, everything will go well for you. My cancer was clear in 2012. And what was that moment like for you? Uh, the best day ever. Never give up and there's always hope. March 10, I went back for my fifth follow-up. Lymph nodes has shrunk from 3.7 SUV max down to 2.7. Yes! With all the fight, with all the love, with all the support, family and friends, I'm beating cancer. Okay. We got this. Never give up. Let the tears fall sometimes. We can bend. Coming up, it's Bob Super Sports next. Don't go away. We have the first place winner of the Gold's Gym Body Transformation Challenge.
get a load of this. Here's your chance to win cold hard cash with Tokemo Pacific's prepaid giveaway. For a limited time only, get a chance to win cash and cool Tokemo Pacific gear every time you load $5 worth of Tokemo Pacific prepaid. Every Friday, we'll reward 5 winners with 50 bucks and 1 grand prize of $250 to one lucky person. Every $5 worth of prepaid load gets you an automatic entry. Load more and get more chances to win with Tokemo Pacific's prepaid giveaway. Tokemo Pacific. Better together. Some conditions apply. Good evening and welcome to Channel 2 Health Talk. I'm Dr. Tony Stearns of Marianas Medical Center. Did you know that secondhand smoke is a major cause of heart disease? Just as actual smoking does, exposure to secondhand smoke has immediate adverse effects on the cardiovascular system and contributes to coronary artery heart disease. Breathing secondhand smoke can have both immediate and long-term negative effects on your blood and blood vessels, leading to narrowing and blocking of the coronary arteries, the blood vessels that supply oxygen and other nutrients to the heart muscle. This process increases the chance of suffering a heart attack even in people who don't smoke themselves. People who already have heart disease are at especially high risk from breathing secondhand smoke and should take special precautions to avoid even brief exposure. No one should smoke cigarettes or other forms of tobacco, but if you already have heart disease, it is critical to your health to quit. Remember, there is no safe level of exposure to either first or secondhand smoke. Join me again next week for another segment of Channel 2 Health Talk and have a healthy week. Let's roll at Gold's Gym Saipan with group exercise for every body. Total Resistant Exercise or TRX helps develop your core and improve strength. And Zumba toning is probably the funnest way to get fit. The Shake Cafe is a great place to stop by for meal replacement or supplements. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. ASPN2 Sports is brought to you in part by Triple J Motors. Buenas Sports fans. Buenas sports fans, some stunning transformations as the 2019 Gold's Gym Challenge wrapped up on Saturday. Participants spent 12 weeks tackling their goals in this body transformation challenge. For some, it was a chance to lose some weight. For others, the goal was to gain muscle mass or lower their resting heart rate. All the goals involved better nutrition, and each competitor had to battle adversity. Over $5,000 in cash and prizes were awarded to the winners. $1,000 went to the grand prize winner, as announced by Gold's general manager, Tice Mister. 68 pounds what? and did not lose any lean muscle, which is absolutely phenomenal. Romulo Orsini, come on up. $1,000 and uh, one year at Gold's Gym. Yeah. Romolo Orsini changed his diet, his workouts, and his life. I decided no one else is going to make my dreams come true except for myself. So I, let's start today. The first thing I did was focus on diet and getting my body used to eating healthy and flushing out all the toxins. I eat more vegetables, lean protein, and avoid as much sugar as possible. I hope to inspire many more people with what I have accomplished and to use my unlimited talents from God and use it for the service of others. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and to all of you.
the 2019 Gold's Gym Challenge. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! Your weather report for today, an 87 high, 97 heat index, 79 low, 69% humidity. Today, scattered clouds throughout the day, no rainfall, and soupy, and tomorrow, mostly sunny. East winds, 10 to 15 miles per hour, high 85, low 80, seas 46 feet, sunrise 5.51 a.m., sunset at 6.35 p.m. Thank you, Ashley, for that weather, and I gotta say, the body, the gold's body, the gem uh, transformation the challenge. 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 Yeah. Amazing. I yeah. mean, we got to witness Bob, watch and we saw him, yeah. him slim down a little bit too, and put the work him, in. For sure. So yeah, it was definitely awesome. toned up. Yeah, Looks and good. he actually, which once he, once we see him again, we can't wait to tell him. But he won the essay contest. Yeah. Part of it. So it's exciting. Yeah, that was a really good essay. We got to. We got to proofread it. <laughs> yeah, before it was submitted, so exactly. it turned out to be good for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you all for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow night. Have a great rest of your night.